S S S S K vibe maker. It's enough. Well, myself, S K vibe maker. My interviews are hotter, and you know we bring through the best special guests. We ain't changing tradition anytime soon. Now today we have a very special guest in the virtual room, man. Let them know who's in the room today. Listen, it's your boy. It's very nice to meet you. And trust me, you can't catch her. It's Wes Nelson. Cheese, man. Of course, a lot of people, <laughs> they know you, Wes Nelson, as being part of the fourth season of Love Island and doing a few things after that. The journey has been very interesting since 2018, man. How would you break down your, your journey over the last few years, man? You know, all I can say is it's been a complete whirlwind. It's been crazy. Um, I've met a lot of people. I've, I've, I've learned a lot of stuff as well about myself, about people around me and about the industry. But... For me, yeah, it's just been it's been wild. Obviously, Love Island, Dancing on Ice, the sink or swim, swim in the channel for can stand up for cancer. Like, there's there's been a lot that's been sandwiched into it, but um, a lot that's been asked of me, not of what I've always wanted to pursue. So like TV work's not something that I wanted to get into or this that and the other. That just sort of came about. Mm -hmm. I embraced it, took it for what it was, learned from it. But then music's the the one thing that I've always wanted to do. I've just of been course that before straight and obviously because of all the stuff that you've done predominantly to this point, people have seen you as a reality star going into music. Has that transition been easier than you thought it has been? Um, no, yes and no. Like, because there's, 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 it's a double-edged sword. It's like you, people people see the profile and think, oh yeah, that's good. That'll, that'll, that's going to like, that's going to convert straight away to to music to music listeners and and fans and that it just don't it don't work like that. i thought it was going to be easy mm -hmm. i thought it was like i was looking i was like i got 1.6 million followers like it, if, if i put something out people are going to hear it yes people are going to be um like people are going to have a lot to say about it because i've come from reality and this and but they'd hear it mm -hmm. which is a hurdle but it's not the case like it, it, it they, they don't convert <laughs> as easy as you think they would mm. um but what I have said is like I don't want to. I didn't want to use my platform as something that I'd scream from the rooftops and say, "Listen, I'm a I'm a music artist now. Everyone listen to me and, and don't mm -hmm. ever talk to me about Love Island again." That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I know it's not going to happen overnight. All I'm saying is that I'd rather put my I put good music out, music that people vibes to, and then that does the talking for me. I don't have to to mm -hmm. scream from the rooftops. Let the music mm -hmm. do the talking. So speaking of that base that you mentioned, the 1.6 million followers that predominantly knew you as a reality star before, um, the transition, was it a bit awkward then? Like when, yeah, you know, so you, you coming out as a musician now, how much of that 1.6 million did you see kind of saying like, bruv, like you're doing the music thing now, like kind of confused. Of people, or a lot of people, not even the people that follow me though, remember that, because my face is, a lot of people that know me don't, don't follow me. This is the thing. So like, a lot of people I see on the blog pages like, oh yeah, I was saying with I put something out on my gram that nearly a year ago saying like, oh I'm cooking, and they were like, oh leave that in the oven, leave that in the <laughs> oven. I'm just like my chest, my chest, my chest. Mm. But then they start the the crepe sweet and all that starts coming out, and and all these people started talking and saying speak of my name in the music scene, and then everyone started going, all oh, right, okay, maybe something is some coming out, and then that same person. I said, I'm not even gonna name the name, but it's, it's been shouting me out and shouting out my new songs. Mm. But there's in the public eye and I seen that and I seen them leave that comment. I was like, all right. And then <laughs> now they're now they're they're on board. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I, I didn't want to be angry at them and people were gonna I, I could understand I've come from Riley A T V and not many people have made that transition. So I can understand people being a bit confused at first, like, oh God, here we go again. Mm. But then I just let the music, like I say, let the music do the talking and they can't argue with good music. Straight up. Now, when it comes to Love Island, I'm not going to say that I'm the biggest watcher of Love Island, Wes. Do you know what I'm saying? Diva. My girl definitely Diva. watches it. Do you know Diva. what I'm saying? But like, when I see it, I see a lot of like buff women in there. Like when I say buff, I mean like obviously like they look like they've been working out and keeping their body good. And the same with the men. Did you feel like the pressure, like I'm about to go into Love Island, I'm going to thump these weights and I'm going to cut myself up? Or was you like that before? Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? <laughs> I've never been to the gym other than the four weeks before Love Island. Wow. Okay, then. I don't know how much I believe you, Wes. No, I but like... You, I promise you. I promise you. I ain't touched weight since. I ain't touched weights before. So we say natural cuts and all that, yeah? Yes, like that. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes especially when... You, know what, <laughs> you wouldn't expect it. You wouldn't expect it. Oh, okay. He's eating a pizza. But the thing is, you might be eating oh, pizza now, but, pizza well. <laughs> but you might have that eating, like, you know what I'm saying? But if you outwork it, it's okay. It is what it is. It's like, because I have to get something quick. Like now we're doing interviews and this, that and the other. So uh, eating like this is 
not part of the plan, but it, it, it hits the spot right now. But mm-hmm. I, I'm not I'm not gonna lie, it hits the spot. But no, gym wise, I only ever smashed gym before Love Island. Four weeks. My thing, my thing, my thing. day. You day. didn't feel you didn't feel like once you got to the stage where you were when you entered the Love Island and really? and like your body was in good condition that yeah. you wanted to maintain it or nothing like that. Not really. Like, cause I was, I was like, I was bland when I went on the, in the villa, but I was 19 when they asked me to go on. So like, I don't want to look like a prepubescent child standing next to 20, 25, 26 year old men. Mm-hmm. I'm just like looking like a little skinny kid. Mm. So I thought, right, let me go, let me go in and gym real quick. Eat bear. I ate, ate, ate eight meals a day or something like that. Stupid. Eight meals a day. Like six to eight meals a day. Like little, little t- Tupperware trays. And then um, bear. And you trained every day. Yeah. Twice a day, 6 a.m. in the morning. And then before I went to bed after training, because I did Muay Thai, so Muay Thai, train in the morning, lift weights, Muay Thai, then lift weights again after the Muay Thai. So you done that in four weeks, man. Was that really hard? Was that like a yeah, big it's challenge? Tough, it's tough, but I'm I'm a very driven person. When I have my eyes set on something, I was like, I'm gonna hit eighty five. I'm gonna hit eighty. I think it was eighty five kg. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna hit eighty five kg, and I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna look like a clean eighty five kg straight up and i was gassed I was it's like, surprising that you haven't maintained it then like after reaching that I've pinnacle broke. man I've, I've, no I've, I'm, I'm still in good shape still, <laughs> still, got the abs, still got everything there it's just that i don't go to the gym for it stay I'm up strong i'm mm-hmm. just lucky one day all this pizza and mac and cheese is gonna catch up on me and then i'll get back in <laughs> let's talk about your your music school your school of music you know what i mean like um what were some of the you know the music that was a big influence on you when you were growing up like some of the growing influential up, UK sounds. Growing up, I was li- I was heavy into R and B, heavy into R and B. So, my, I think my first album I ever bought was was Neo Year of the Gentleman, mm. and I was obsessed with Neo Boy. Like I loved listening to Neo a lot. Come on, mm-hmm. um, Chris Brown, um, Usher, all them kind of vibes. That was me. That was just me there. Mm-hmm. Um, what's it? Luther Vandross. This, I think it's just all my family. All my family listen to is that the old school R&B and my pops, and then I'd be I'd be listening to the more neo kind of stuff. Um, but that's what I'm trying to implement in it, in my music now is like mm-hmm. having that R&B sort of flavors and vibes, but with sort of Afro beat and UK sound and stuff. What are the artists that you've studied like, mostly? It's got to be neo. I think neo mm. and Chris Brown probably. But then more recently, like Drake, Saint John. Um, Hans Zimmer, mm-hmm. which you probably wouldn't expect, but like very Hans, musical, ha, ha, yeah. Hans Zimmer, I think the way that he can put people, he can put you in a space without lyrics, without anything, without mm-hmm. visuals, he can put you in a space sonically, and I think mm-hmm. that's incredible. Like, you, if you listen to Interstellar album and you in the soundtrack of that, that film, and I said to you, and you never list, watched Interstellar, and I said, Where do you feel like you are? you'd say space, mm-hmm. or you listen to The Last Samurai, you mm-hmm. know, you're in, you know, you're, you know, you're in the, the Japanese hills. Like mm-hmm. the guy can put you anywhere in the world sonically, and I think that's crazy. If you can implement that in your music, just a little bit of it, mm-hmm. I think it's crazy. Now, through your path, you know, what I mean, you're definitely we have to look at some of the stigmas attached to being a reality, you know, TV star. First and foremost, like they say that maybe they don't last too long. That you know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. maybe they're one trick ponies. You've definitely proved some of those doubters wrong so far because you know, what I mean, you've done a few reality TV shows, you've done other mm-hmm. things outside of that, and you're getting you know taken seriously as a musician right about now. What are some of the do's and don'ts that you think are advised for people coming out of the reality TV world? Do's and don'ts is um, don't take everything. Don't take everything because every, they'll dangle bare, there's bare mm-hmm. carrots being dangled everywhere. And you can go, wow, look at that fee. But then you look at the shelf life of it. You're like, if you go on a, I ain't going to name names and slander anyone, but like, say if you did so, uh, something that looked a bit trashy, like a trashy show. Mm. And you look at it and you think not trashy, but you just think like, uh, like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and you know, if you go on it, you ain't going to get any serious shows after that. But you think, mm-hmm. right, the carrots there, the, the money's there. Let me just jump on this. And mm-hmm. then you ruin it. Mm-hmm. And you, you become saturated. If you take everything that people know that you're going to take everything. And my biggest is, is invest. Just invest early, mm-hmm. early. Mm-hmm. I've got my houses now, so like I've got my. I house. said houses. <laughs> lots, of houses. <laughs> lots, lots of houses. But yeah, I've been yeah I've been working on that for since I've come out, and my dad manages my properties now. My brother, my brother plays ball, so he, my dad basically now is retired this year, and his job now is is managing properties. Mm-hmm. So it's it's all within the family. It's dope. 
um, yeah, that's me. That's me. But that, I got that solidified from early, early. Like mm -hmm. I ran my, I wanted to run my bank down to as little as I could possibly could by putting everything and everything in mm -hmm. uh, investments. Mm -hmm. And then that's just seen me through now. Um, but then that gave me the chance to be able to have passive income, do whatever I need to do and mm -hmm. focus on music. I don't have to focus on taking any jobs here, taking any jobs there. Mm -hmm. I turned down the biggest financial year in TV ever of the year I signed my record deal, but I didn't even know I was going to do I hadn't even wrote a song at this point. Mm -hmm. And I turned all these TV things down, like biggest things that I'd been working for weren't even trashy. Mm -hmm. They were actually the ones that I wanted to get. But then mm -hmm. I thought like, I've been thrown into this. Would I be aiming for this before? No. What do I actually want to do? Music. Mm -hmm. Okay, then turn it down. My manager at the time went nuts. He's like, what the hell are you doing? You've been working for this for ages. I was just mm -hmm. like, yeah, but it don't feel right. If it don't mm -hmm. feel right, it ain't feel right. And then it paid off tenfold mm -hmm. when I signed my record deals and I've done what I've needed to do now. And I feel so much better for it. I feel so much more fulfilled. Mm. So you said some of those big TV deals you turned down, you hadn't written a song um, yeah. to that date there. You know what I mean? You signed a record deal. So it kind, of, it kind of sounds like maybe you weren't prepared to go into the music world. But I heard that obviously you always had aspirations to do music. This is the thing. So, I mean, I dropped everything with TV for to follow my dream in music. So like I didn't, hadn't written a song, hadn't done this, any other, but as a musical guy, but... I believed that I could do it. I was just like, you know what, I can, I can, I can do this. I can 100% do this. Mm -hmm. And then it happened. And then it never felt better. Now, you know, the big stigma that we kind of touched on, there's been the big stigma about reality TV, people going into music, you know what I'm saying, not being taken seriously and all the other stigmas involved. But then over the, the last couple years, we've seen people transition successfully. Now, would you say through your experience that maybe... You know what I mean? If you're a musician and you want to get it popping, maybe you might want to sort of take into account the opportunity of going via the reality TV route before you do your music because you'll be able to get your brand and everything popping very quicker, just like how you've had a quicker impact because you went through that route. Would you advise that route for musicians? I wouldn't... I wouldn't advise it. I wouldn't... It, it is... It, it has its wins and its losses. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like... And I can't say, and I can't say, like, I can't talk about the losses because the first one obviously went so well for me. But it, to be taken serious by, like, labels and other artists, if my song didn't, I think if Cena Body didn't do as well as it did, it's, it, it would be a huge task still, like, now, like, massive task. Mm -hmm. And, like, they only supported me because I have a, a backlog of like 60, 70 songs. Like I've got so many songs that I've wrote and shown them and this, that and the other. And they've seen where I'm going from and to. Mm. Like, it's not like I've just did one song, got a following and then thought, you are, I'm going to make it into number three in the charts. Mm. That, it, that it just don't convert like you think it's going to convert. Mm. And there's a lot of people that have released songs recently that have bigger followers than me, if not less, just a little bit less. Mm. Ain't got more than fifty thousand, thirty thousand streams in mm. months. It Crazy. Don't convert as quick, but then they'll get a hundred thousand likes on a picture, but can't mm -hmm. get hundred thousand like hundred thousand mm. listens on a song. Mm -hmm. you don't convert the same way as you think it would. Mm. But if your music's popping and and it's good and it's banging and you think it's gonna and you you've got substance before and you've got some contacts, I think why not? Like it's it's possible. You see me do it, like and anyone can do it. If I could do it, anyone can do it. Like mm. you can do it, but you have to actually be you want to be a musician before that. Mm. People didn't know I was a musician before I wanted to do this stuff because you ain't seen me before. Stay uh, up. You're stoked. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like I've been doing this from early. Like I've wanted to do this my whole life. Mm. But if that's genuinely true with you too, then yeah, why not? Why not? So talk to me about this stash of music that you got, because I'm hearing about this big stash of music that you got. And like at the moment, like the, the, the music that we've heard from you thus far has been like a sort of hybrid between like, R&B-ish with like a tinge of like that Afro fusion, Afro beats kind of sound. Now, how much experimentation, how much outside of that realm are we going to get? Are we going to hear you on I drill? Like are we going to hear you on grime? Yeah. Are we going to hear you on dancehall? Are you going to be taking it the electronic route or is this the kind of pocket that you're kind of sitting in all the way? It's it's not 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 grime, not, um, grime, not drill. That ain't, what you, what do you think? Wes Nelson from Love Island is going to come out and start talking about wetting man down. <laughs> hey, listen, R and drill, R and drill, and it's I'm a rising. Wet, Listen, the only thing I'm wetting down is my throat with this water. That's it. <laughs> R and drill is an emerging, you know, sort of genre. Yeah, I've done, oh yeah, so I've got some R and drill stuff, 
like and with the drill sound and AOAs that, yeah, yeah, I mean, straight. all that kind of stuff. That's all mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. and some hard kicks, double kicks coming into the to the verses and coming into the hooks. Like, yeah, we got that, we got that, but not like the subject matters. No, no, I ain't talking about that. That's that, that ain't me. <laughs> that's not happening. No, pretending that's me. I'm I'm staying true to what I actually love, and obviously I've sp- told told you before is that is that R and B is huge for me. I love R and B. But I'm just trying to find that middle ground where I can put R and B with that UK rap with that hip hop and just just get everything in one nice little melting pot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because and I'm not saying I'm not being a pessimist now. R and B is hard to implement the way that we've heard it growing up, like growing up as as kids mm-hmm. in the UK now in the mm-hmm. current climate. I don't think people listen to it the same way as they did. Well, UK R and B has definitely had its big struggles, man. Dude, Huge, mm. and and I think it's I think it's hard. It, it's hard to break. We're, there's a, there's a lot of artists in the UK that have got amazing voices, amazing artists that are struggling, and they should be popping. But then we've got to look at what when we say popping, it's people have got to listen to it. Like people mm. have got to want to listen. And when there's other genres out there that are just flying right now, mm. it takes that attention away. So I'm just trying to find that hybrid that just 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 meets the blend. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. And I'm not saying I'm trying to make a new R and B and new school. I'm just saying like. There's mm. bits and pockets that can be changed and moved mm. that could, could make it more more adapted for the, the modern modern era now. I know? think unlike the other genres that we mentioned, maybe like grime and like drill, they've got stories and a narrative behind them where it seems like the R&B doesn't, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like yeah. with you as well, like kind of speaking about it before already, the advantage that you have is reality TV background, whereas a lot of the R&B artists that are very, very talented just are not getting that traction and the music is very good. So maybe it goes back to what we're saying again, they need to do some publicity stunts, maybe go reality TV, build up the brand. There's loads, there's, there's tons and tons of things and ways that you can you can move around it. It's just, all I know is how I can try and help and bring people through as well. I want to bring, if I can, if I've got myself a, p- a platform and I'm doing this and my music popping and I see some, there's a guy called Trey, Trey Qua. This song is vibes, like vibe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's got like 20,000 streams. I was like, you are high, you're, you're high. Like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. But um. Any people like that, I'm trying to put them. On, I'm trying to put them on, and I'm not even like an established credible artist myself yet. But if I can mm-hmm. help them get there, I'll I'll do my best. So what I want to talk about, what I've been speaking to about uh, with a few artists um, over the last few weeks is about you know we're in a digital world at the moment, man. Streams, YouTube numbers, the digits, the numbers they count a lot. They get promoted. Um, for you, how much do you think the numbers um, certify how good a song is? This is another one again, like I've, where I, I spoke about Trey's, Trey's music and I've, I've heard so many songs that just fly under the radar. Um, but there's so many different things now that account to numbers and it's not just, but back in the day, it would probably be how good's the song to how many streams it's got. Gangnam Style, is that the best song in the world? How many, how many <laughs> streams has that thing got? God damn. Yeah. There's a lot more in a digital world now that comes into numbers. It ain't just a, a positive correlation between numbers, talent, and, and how good a song is. It, mm-hmm. it don't work like that. I think there's things like when you've got added platforms like TikTok, Instagram, memes, viral. We live in a meme culture now. Mm. Like move, eh, get out the way, things like that. That, song, mm. that song's a banger, don't get me wrong, but would it have been as big as it is now? If it was, if it wasn't for that, that's just one that's just come to my head. Like, there's mm-hmm. so many things that come into it, mm-hmm. so many things. Dance Monkeys, just huge right now. That went huge on TikTok. There's so many songs that are blown on TikTok as well that are just flying. They aren't mm-hmm. better than some of the certain songs below them, mm-hmm. but they they move, and and it's also become a part of um, an artist's inventory now. Is like trying to trying to make it pop on other things. Numbers, man. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Now, as a young brother in the early part of your career, you've definitely got it popping, man. You've come off a of Love Island as well. People see you as a sex symbol. As a young new artist in the game, how do you manage to navigate through the groupies and not indulge in that too much and find the right woman, man? How do you manage to do that, Wes? See, I'm with me now. Like, I've, I'm being bare private about my, my love life because uh, it, it just gets messy. We've seen with the past two people I've been with. Yes, that stuff can get a little bit tricky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but for me, I'm a I'm a very a very chilled guy, and I, I don't really go out looking for someone to to wife off. Like I, I just it just happens. It just happens. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you can see through the fakes. You can see through the snakes sometimes. I'm good at like a judge of character. I think I've got a very good judge of character. I've been wrong. I've been wrong. I'll put my hands up. I've been wrong about some mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. We all are, and it's learning. Mm-hmm. Um, but you just gotta, you just gotta understand that this is a game for some people. Like people think that that this whole fame and meeting someone's a game. Like there's girls that that literally go out for that reason. Like they mm-hmm. go check you for that reason. And like if you start to see through that, and then you give them some questions or you give them some scenarios and you put them in certain situations and see how they act. And you, you don't get mad at them for acting in a certain way. You just, just understand it's like, all oh, right, that's what you want. And yeah. You get yeah. the trueness of it. Do you know what it's I mean? Crazy. You, just, you just got to take time, not rush into things. And because you rush into it, they'll, they'll start, they'll start doing all their tactics to try and get you in first and try and cuff you, try and mm. get you under the thumb sort of thing. But then, mm. If you just long it out and they don't get what they want, you'll see their true colours. Straight up. Now, nice to meet you. The latest single with Young Bane. You got the line on there where you say, if I put you in a foreign, ain't no stalling. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> it was a funny line to me, man. It was a creative line, man. <laughs> are you a stunt or are you low key with it? I'm I'm a stunter, but with, with not I'm an in life stunter. I think I'm thinking I'm a real life stunter. Like I'm not going I'm don't you don't you won't see me on the gram like putting bare jewelry, this, 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 like in your face and like constantly doing mindless, senseless flexing. Mm. Like that just ain't me. But in real life, I would be mindless flexing on everyone. Mm. <laughs> I, I, wish, I just wear, I, I wear my stuff with pride. I wear my things with pride. I like nice things. I'm not ashamed to say I like nice things, but I work for my nice things and I've invested. Mm. And I said to myself, I'm investing in all my houses, this, that, and the other before I get anything nice and go crazy. Mm. I've done that. I only spend my free money now. I don't spend my earned money. Mm. Straight money up. Big from passive income, not mm. what I Mm-hmm. First single with Hardy Caprio, second single with Young Bane. People are asking when they're going to actually get the solo single from Wes Nelson, man. Could When's that next. coming, man? Could be next. Could be next. You're not afraid of that, though. You're not scared of that. I ain't scared of that. You're crazy, <laughs> man. Oh, I ain't scared of that. Bro, there's, most of my songs have got no one, uh, no one else on them. Like mm-hmm. most of them. And, and both of them songs that we've just done, Seen Nobody and Nice to Meet You, initially, didn't, we were always going to put them out on their own anyway. Mm-hmm. And then the the right things happen, and, and we, we got the. I just want to make the best songs possible. This mm-hmm. is the thing. I don't care. I'm not egotistical to say, oh, I don't want anyone else on this one with me, or I don't. Want, I want this one on to try and help me pop. Mm-hmm. Ain't the case. I know mm-hmm. I can do it without. I know I can do it with. Mm-hmm. I just, I've got stuff coming. There's nice and it's, and I think my str- some my some of my strongest singles are, are on my own, and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm gassed about them them coming out. You, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll I'll see if I can get something across to you. Uh huh. Nice man. Well, talk to me about the making of Nice to Meet You and connecting with Young Bane. Nice to Meet You was um so it was produced by Ao Beats. Ao was just playing this playing this in the studio as I walked in, and instantly like some of my fastest songs that I've wrote are, just, um, are the best ones I think, and instantly I just went. He went. <laughs> I was like, eh, 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 nice to meet you, and it just, it just it just flowed from there straight away, mm-hmm. and that was that it from that, and then it just went on and on and on and on. We did the hook, then the melodies, and blah blah blah. Finished. That was a really quick song, mm-hmm. um, because it's not really like a, a big message song. It's not like mm-hmm. I'm not trying to bars people. Out. I'm not trying to do this that. Any of it. I'm mm-hmm. just trying to have a good time. It's like that fresh, fr- uh, fresh trim feeling song. Like mm-hmm. go out, flex on people, feel good. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, what about Bane? And with Bane, it we um, it is a nice feel. It's a nice. It's like it's a cheeky song. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like a hey, nice to meet you. Doing my Sunday best. It's like Bane is that personified. Bane's a cheeky mm-hmm. chappy. Mm-hmm. He loves his drip. He loves flexing on people. He feels himself sometimes. Like so, for profile wise, wise he already fits it bang on. Mm-hmm. And then his voice sounds perfect with the track, and I think it contrasts nice to mine as, as well. So I think it it just blended good. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just reached out to him and he, he got it pop. We got it, pop. got it popping. It's been another one myself, SK Vibe Maker. My interviews are hotter. Wes Nelson, proving the doubt is wrong, man. Tell a friend to tell a friend. SK Vibe Maker.